Writing a saga or a series is not an easy task, and this is why we are up to part eight. Create your chapter and book index. The reason I have this section here is because it's important to organize your chapters in a way where you can visually see them laid out and organized into your 27 plot points without having to see all the hoopla and notes and uh, outlining and all the uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then you might be saying, but Thomas, what is a chapter and book index? Well, that's what we're going to go over today. We're going to explain basically uh, uh, how you organize it and what the purpose of all the notes are within that organization. And of course, like all files, uh, they will be available for free in the, the link below. All right. Now, uh, before we really uh, jump into anything, please subscribe, like, comment, and share the videos that uh, we make. And uh, let's uh, let's help one another, right? I don't necessarily have any tips uh, for this particular video this time because I'm just going to go over uh, something that's fairly new uh, with uh, some information that you might know of. Uh, th this is not a common practice. This is just something that I've always used that has helped me uh, quickly analyze. Uh, the reason is because if you've been following the series saga playlist, uh, we go, we, you know, we start with small little summary and then we grow really, really big. And then once we're really big, that starts helping us organize, you know, how long a chapter is, what isn't a chapter. And then once we're at the chapters, we got to start shrinking it back down because if our brain simplifies the information and looks at it, we're able to control it a little bit more. Uh, and that's ultimately what this is. So we're going to jump right to laying out your chapters. So as you can see, this is pretty, this is blank. So there's no chapter titles, all right? But it is all three acts, all 27 plot points, and of course, the prologue and epilogue. You might say, Thomas, what is this? So we're going to start off, uh, we're going to start off with this and just and go down. All right, as you can see, it says numbers because there are no amount of chapters um, boop, boop, within this section, all right? However, uh, section one, which would be uh, these three plot points, if I had five chapters in that, this, so uh, basically if it was, uh, you know, one, two, three, uh, untitled, titled, right? Uh, and then let's just say uh, four and then five, right? Then I would come up here and I'd say there's five. Now, you might be saying, well, why do I need to know that? Well, because the quick summary is if I look at this and I see maybe it looks like this, uh, you know, one, and then maybe it's a five, uh, let's say, let's say a four, a two, a seven, uh, right? And there's maybe, a, let's say this is a two, a one, and one, all right? Okay, uh, right off the bat, I, I know my pacing is going to be weird, and I know that the sections themselves are going to be uneven, all right? Because remember, at minimum, you want at least one chapter per plot point. One chapter per plot point. So if we look down here, I know that at minimum section one is going to be three chapters long. It's going to have, it's going to have at least one chapter explain the ordinary world, one chapter explain the inciting incident, and one chapter explain how the protagonist reacts to the inciting incident, right? So five chapters isn't too crazy. However, by looking at the the extended version of it just in an eye i know i i think i have some work to do i know that uh my third chapter my third act is going to be weak it only has four chapters so not only does it have uh not only is it missing the you know you need nine chapters minimum per act right just to make sense with each section because section seven has three plot points section eight has three plot points and section nine has three plot points with that said, uh, we also know that four chapters would be quick. So we know the pacing would be flying through. Even if, let's say, 
one of the two chapters in section seven is uh, 5,000 words and the other one is uh, 6,000 words. All right, those are going to be slow paced chapters because they're right next to each other and they're huge chunky donkeys, right? But then what about the, these two chapters, right? So if it's 3,000 and then another 5,000, maybe that'll work, but we're also not fulfilling the plot points. So things are going to be missing. We're going to be jumping over certain elements that are uh, necessary specifically for the 27 chapter or 27 plot point outline. Uh, obviously, if you use a different form uh, to outline, uh, this might not uh, qualify or, or provide any uh, uh, you know, help in that sense. But, um, but you can do this. Like if you have a three-act structure or, uh, or you're doing the hero's journey, it has 12 plot points in it. You would just rearrange this to to fit uh, that element of it. Anyway, so I also know that the ordinary world has to do a lot of setup. It has to really explain uh, what the story is and what the world is, et cetera, et cetera. So I know that's three plot points, right? So if five chapters are spread out along that, I know I'm going to do a good job, okay? I know that's a pretty – that's solid, especially uh, – you know, you got to remember it's 12 percent uh, of the chat of the book uh, must have the, the inciting incident has to happen within 12 percent of the book. So if you have 27 chapters times 12 uh, percent, you're looking at at least three chapters. So that means uh, section one um, has to uh, well, I shouldn't say has to, but uh, this ordinary world, this first plot point uh can only be two chapters at that point because you want to at least get to this by th your third chapter. The fourth chapter is pushing it, right? Um, so that that's the other element you're looking for. You're trying to figure out the movement of the importance of the ordinary world, which is ultimately setting up the ordinary world, the inciting incident, and the reaction to that inciting incident. So right off the bat, I would be able to do a lot of internal thinking here and just start trying to realize, uh, adjust and fix and be like, all right, maybe I got to break some of the longer chapters up into two chapters. And then I, that means I can focus on those moments a little bit more. I can now say, oh, a chapter that had three hard chapter breaks in it and had three strong scenes. Now, maybe I could have three strong chapters that are dedicated to those moments. Not only would that potentially help with pacing, but maybe I can actually dive deeper emotionally through the characters into those scenes. So that's the other element, you know, because again, th this two chapter element right here for the victory seems impossible. Maybe those two chapters themselves are broken up into hard chapter breaks as well. And if that's the case and I have three hard chapter breaks in each of those, that means I have six scenes, which means technically I could get six chapters uh, and turn this into six chapters. Boom. Now six, seven, eight. Now I need one more chapter to really know that I'm going to hit all those plot points. Um, so that's an example of why uh, this is important. Uh, but with that said, let's... Uh, do -do -do, uh, do -do -do. Whoops. Hey, hey. Bring this back to normal. All right. Let's uh, let's go down to this. Now we're saying we have to add this. Now, if you remember, we are working on this storyline, which is the noir, okay? And in doing the noir, we've already done some back work, back end work. Uh, you know, we we did a, a, a zero draft outline uh, for one of the chapters, et cetera, et cetera. But let's start putting in chapters just so we can kind of see what it would look like. So we know that chapter one is going to be Welcome to Chicago in 1946. All right. Sorry. <laughs> you know what that's? It's welcome to the jungle. I just gave away my age. All right. But we also know we're going to get a second chapter. Buy this man a drink. You can't go wrong with that. So right off the bat, we already know we got some uh, chapter work here. Let's go here. Now, the inciting incident, we decided to make one chapter long, which is fine, because remember, uh, each plot point has to have a minimum, a minimum of one chapter. Okay? 
Da, 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 da. Let's see, do we have more? Oh, yeah, here we go. The mundane of it all. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, we have to go back here. We did not go past section one when it came to uh, outlining this uh, in the earlier um, uh, videos. So I'm going to kind of uh, go down and uh, organize this into chapters. All right. So the first thing I'll probably do is look at this. Jack is working a born case in his car. Jack reads an article by. All right. So this right right here, this is probably going to be uh, one chapter. So. We know chapter five. And by the way, my goal was to make this a quick book. It was uh, like when I was working on the idea. I think that was one of the stipulations is that I, I didn't want it to be a lot of chapters. And I wanted to try to make it 27 chapters long. But again, even if that's our starting point, you have to remember sometimes you do have to expand the plot point uh, just because uh, certain things come up, you know. So what is this, a boring case? Uh Okay. A case like any other. Now, again, these uh, these chapter titles can change and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. All right. Jack ends up at the lounge with uh, Elizabeth Sings while sitting in the lounge bar. All right. Sing me a song. <clears throat> okay. Very simple, all right? Uh, and number six is uh, Jack is approached outside of the lounge bar as he gets in his car. It's a man. And, you know, ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo, I mean, Elizabeth, a lounge singer with a mysterious past. Let's say Jack has approached uh, the man who came... new case all right and now we're on plot point seven jack follows elizabeth home trailing her from a safe distance but he notices someone else so he leaves all right so um uh again that feels like a one chapter kind of experience uh so this might be um follow me following you all right i like uh by the way again we always uh, if you if you follow this channel as i take a, a sip of soda one of the things we talk about is your writer's voice. Some writers will choose to have chapter titles. Some writers will just choose to have it say chapter one, chapter two. Some might have it just say one, two, three. Some will just have it just be a chapter title. Like it'll say a new case. It won't even have a chapter. Um, that's a part of your writer's voice. The other thing is the style in which you use your chapter titles. I like chapter titles that have a little play with words. Uh, there's a feel to it. It connects to the chapter. Um, so, you know, sometimes I like them to do the work, the heavy work. So uh, that's why chapter one is Welcome to Chicago, uh, 1946. It does a lot of the heavy lifting. It, uh, it automatically... Um, you know, brings the reader to that moment, right? And that does a lot of the heavy lifting. So number eight, as Jack delves into the case, he uncovers layers of deceit, drawing him deeper into a web. As Jack delves deeper into the web, he receives an anonymous tip. All right, I'm going to make this two chapters, not because there's two moments, but um, as Jack delves into the case, he uncovers layers of deceit, uh, drawing him so what actually what i might do is three chapters so plot point eight which is nice because this is the first plot twist right so let's do that uh let's see nine ten eleven and uh by the way when i'm also when i'm working on uh when i'm first working on my uh my novels these might not end up being the chapter titles i use they might but some of them might change. Um, but usually, I really like to make sure that the chapter title makes sense too, as so they kind of guide me into what I'm working on. But because we're skipping a step, because uh, again, when we did uh, the first section, uh, you know, I summarized what is this chapter about? What is what are things that have to happen in this chapter? Right. So the process is different. 
See, I didn't summarize this. I only summarized the first chapter. You know, if you go back and watch the videos, uh, you'll see the process I do. But um, since I didn't do the summary, you know, the summary would actually tell me what it is. But uh, for now, because I didn't do the summary, I might want to just be able to look at the chapter title and know what the deal is. So this will be um, uh, stepping into the dark. Uh, right. A light right now. This is also a light goes on. Okay. And things, uh, I can, I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Okay. All right. There you go. And now we have three chapters and then let's go to nine do, 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 do. at his office. Uh, he mentions, okay, so that's, okay. Number 12, back in the office. Okay. Um, now, I, I continue to do this for chapter, uh, for act two, et cetera, et cetera. But let's, let's kind of uh, take what we've done and organize up here, okay? So we know act one, two, and three is section one, because it's, it's three plot points per section. So that's four acts. So there we go. That's a nice tight... Uh, intro. Okay. And then uh, four, five, six is going to be three. Okay. That's fine. Look at that. Boom. Okay. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So five chapters. Now look at that. Right, right. Just looking at this, I know this has a nice ebb and flow. We have four to set up. Then we kind of like speed things up to get through the problem, disrupts the protagonist's life. And then we we, we slow it down a little bit by living within that moment. The protagonist's life changes direction. So we get to kind of experience that. Uh, we also know we accomplished the one chapter per plot point rule because section two shows us three chapters. All right. There we go. And this just gives us a nice rhythm. Uh, the other thing that helps us with this, if I have beta readers, not my alpha readers, my beta readers, I'm actually not going to send beta readers a chapter at a time. My alpha readers, I will. I'll go, I'll go, hey, um, you know, I'll look at an alpha reader and I'll say, hey, uh, I'm going to send you uh, this chapter. Uh, uh, you know, let's let's kind of read that and then let's talk about that. Here's some questions. Uh, I might send them three or four chapters at a time to read, but those questions that I send them are for each chapter. Okay. Uh, whereas if I have a beta reader, what I'll do is I'll use this to know what the rhythm of my beta readers is going to be. I know the first section needs to be sent to them. So I'm going to send them four chapters and I'm only going to send them questions that are related to section one. So the questions are going to be influenced by these three plot points. So one of the questions for a beta reader would be, um, you know, tell, uh, what are your thoughts on the world? Or tell me about the world. Or who, I might say, you know, who is the protagonist, All right? And those are opening questions for you to get a look into how the reader is perceiving them on page. So if they respond with certain things where you're like, okay, great. Those are the things I was setting up. Those They understand who the character is. I don't need to know if they know what the character's motivation are because you kind of find that out through who is the character to you. Tell me about the character, you know? Uh, so that's important. Other things I might do is they're not, not every reader is going to understand what an inciting incident is. Remember, like a lot of these terminologies many great writers don't even know them. So it, you don't have to know. It's like when I was in music, I, I was a theory freak. I, I knew a lot of theory. I still know a lot of theory, uh, but you don't need to know theory. One of the best musicians I know who literally play any instrument. He just picks it up for some reason. Somehow, you know, the guy plays saxophone and I'm like, you ever play that? He goes, no, I just, I just know. And you're like, oh, well, of course you do. Right. Like, like some people are, are blessed like that. Right. So, you know, terminology isn't something everyone would know. So when you approach your beta readers, uh, you know, you're not going to say, you know, what's the inciting incident, but what you might do is allude to the inciting incident, right? You might ask a question that goes, um, uh, did you, did, did, uh, within these chapters, where did you feel the most pressure or, 
uh, where did you feel the story changed direction? Right. And that, that might, that might let you know if the inciting incident is working or not. Cause if they say, Oh, when he, when a guy bought him a drink, that might not be it because the inciting incident should be when, according to this story, uh, he's leaving the lounge and he's at his car and someone brings him a case. So if they don't mention that, then you realize that, Oh, okay. Uh, maybe I was too, maybe, especially if more than one beta reader says it, um, you know, cause that's the rule, uh, you know, majority rules, <laughs> you know, if someone's like, I don't, I don't like this character's behavior. It feels weird. But then everyone else is like, this character is great. Uh, you know who you listen to, right? Um, uh, but, uh, but if they say, you know, oh, uh, once, the, once that guy brought him the case, I felt like uh, everything changed. It felt like he was, uh, pushed out of his element a little bit that he had to really second guess himself and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, great. All right. Now, now I know they're reading it. All right. So that's the other advantage is like, once you know this, I go, all right, I know I'm going to send them four chapters and I need questions that are based on these plot points. And then I'm going to send them three chapters. Right. But it also helps you say, all right. I know that these four chapters make up the ordinary world. So you're not just randomly like, I'm going to send you the first 10 chapters and then I'll send you some questions. It helps you kind of mold not only your questions, but the movement of the chapters, especially uh, when you, when you're dealing with this, you know? All right. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, that's it really. All right. Questions. Question, how detailed do you get with your outlining process? Let it, let me know in the comments below. Uh, remember, you know, by letting us know your process and how you look at things, uh, you're actually helping the community. Let me fix that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're helping the community because we create a conversation. Uh, not one way is the correct way, but the way that works for you best is the right way. Because uh, there are many ways, and uh, but it's nice to see how other people approach things. I personally like this way, but it isn't the only way that I use. If I start losing steam, or my brainstorming's not working, or I feel lost or trapped, I might start looking at different things, different elements. Um, as Stephen King says, not that I'm a huge fan of his writing, but he is a great writer. I might uh, throw a monster in the room. That monster isn't necessarily, Arr! but it could be something that would challenge. Uh, the characters. That's all throwing a monster in the room means. It means to challenge your characters with something that is outside of what you expected. And that also helps with subverting expectation. But then you as a writer have to get them out of that situation. And, you know, the best way to get them out is not through Deus Ex Machina. It's by watching the characters have to think. And that's character development. If you like what you've been uh, seeing and you enjoy it, and but you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share uh, the uh, video as well as subscribe and uh, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. If you haven't seen them yet or they aren't out yet, I know they're coming out probably uh, June or July. July, I'm probably going to start doing the live. Uh, July, I will most definitely start the uh, live videos again. Uh, so you feel free to join us on those live calls, not calls, but the videos where I do real time outlining, uh, you know, there's other, uh, fun stuff going on. All right. Boom. And the uh, final thoughts. Uh, so my final thoughts on this is basically when you're approaching your story, remember you don't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting before you start the process. What does that mean? It means, especially if you're working in the fictional world, right? Uh, uh, you know, fantasy. Um, I know that the, this example is noir, but if you're working on fantasy, you don't have to explain the whole political, geopolitical uh, 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 scenery or, or the background of it. You don't have to invent different families and races and or species, I like to call them. Uh, start with what helps your story. Start with the emotional cues, right? Allow those things to develop. And then from there, you can kind of expand your story. What this process is, uh, the the seri um, the, st the steps to writing a series or a saga, is really focused on taking what it is you do have, and it allows you to brainstorm through the process. And as you come up to certain roadblocks or ideas, as you if you have not seen the first couple of videos to the series, go back and watch, you'll see that. I build on ideas. I start with one thing and then I realize, oh, I can make that two things or I could go here or, 
oh, the original story was this through line. And then I broke it up into three book stories. And then that means I could focus on this first book. And that expanded it and it added subplots and characters and different different variations to play with. So this whole process is about that. And as you build on that, it's going to expand and get bigger. But then as it gets bigger, like I said, you want to use something like this to start shrinking it down so you can just visually look at it and see the ebb and flow of your number count for the chapters. Uh, you can see what your chapter titles are. Why do you want to do that? Well, if you're trying to think up of a chapter title uh, and all the chapter titles are on one page, you just look at it and you make sure the chapter title feels consistent with not only your voice as a writer, but also uh, the layout of those chapters. Uh, but again, everything is a process. And as you learn what works and doesn't work for you, pick and choose. Some things might work for you in the series and some things might not work for you in the series. That doesn't mean you are a bad writer. It just means you found what works and doesn't work. And I think that makes you a great writer because you are confident and, and uh, uh, you, you take what works and, and you get rid of what doesn't. You don't have to do it my way. You don't have to do it their way. You know, some people are like, Stephen King writes five to six pages a day. And, you know, that might be 1,500 to 2,000 words a day for him, right? Depending on the, you know, his paper size. Um, and if he's doing a traditional manuscript to uh, a double spaced, you're doing 350 words a page, right? Especially at 12 uh, times New Roman 12, 12 font, right? So, you know, uh, what's six times five? I mean, uh, blah, 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 blah. what is five times three? That's 1500. If he does six pages, that's an extra three. So that's 18. If he does uh, seven, what's seven times three? 2100, right? So <clears throat> just because he does that doesn't mean you have to do that, right? In fact, if you wrote 10 words a day or 10 words a week or 10 words every month, at least you're writing, at least you're doing it. If that's the speed you have to write at, that's where you got to start, okay? So my goal with this is just to help you learn how to organize, process, and think about things so you can expand and uh, have a little bit more control over the story process. This also works for pantsers because you still kind of have to know where you're going, what you're doing, and why you want to do it. doesn't mean you have to do it this way, um, but there's always something for somebody. Hey, next video in this series. Uh, this is it. Uh, this was the last step in outlining a series of saga. However... I'm sure I will streamline or adjust the process over the years of being a developmental editor, uh, you know, and uh, that will help you and others hopefully better organize their stories. But for now, we're going to move on to other outlining subjects in general. So keep an eye out for uh, the next video in the original outlining series. So I'm going to still do outlining videos. I'm going to do outlining stuff on live because people really like that. I also have the... Uh, the, anal uh, the analyzing playlist where I take old stories, new stories, and even movies, television shows, and I analyze those using the 27 chapter uh, or the 27 plot point outline. Um, so, uh, you know, I got I got different kind of movies and stuff like that in the queue. Uh, one of them being uh, somebody wanted me to do uh, the uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Sorcerer Stone, uh, depending on where you're from. Um, so that, that's in the queue and I got other things somebody really liked that I did the Da Vinci code. You could see that with, uh, the process of breaking down some outlining, uh, the, uh, the new outlining video I did or, or that is up because this video is out. So it's older anyway. Uh, so I guess that's it. Uh, you know, as always uh, peace and harmony, you know, truth and action. And, uh, you gotta keep developing uh, the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.